Brother Greg. Look at this wave your hand. Let them know who you are. Thank you, Jesus. We thank the Lord that over over 30 years ago, they stepped out. They stepped out on a vision to be able to let this work go forward. And aren't you happy that we are continuing on today? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let's put a hand together for our founder. This is Brother Greg. Good luck to my wife on the organ there. To my children, to the family of God. Amen. How many are ready for words this afternoon? Hallelujah. Let's go right into the word of the Lord this afternoon. I ask that you return to the book of St. Luke, chapter number 10. St. Luke, chapter number 10. We want to say happy Thanksgiving to all of this Thanksgiving weekend. Hope you had a wonderful time with your families. And how many know that you don't need a holiday to have a good time with family and friends? Amen? Amen. Amen. You don't need a holiday. Let's stand as we give reverence to God. St. Luke chapter number 10. I'm going to begin my reading at verse number 38. St. Luke chapter 10, verse number 38. If you would follow the word silently, uh, read along silently as I read the word aloud. The word says as follows. Now it came to pass, as they went, that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much with much serving, and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister have left me, praise God, alone to serve alone. Bid her therefore that she should help me. Verse number 41. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. In other words, you're very worried about many things. Verse 42, which we like to lift our text from. But one thing is needful, and Mary had chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Let's bow our heads this afternoon. Dear Lord, in the name of Jesus, we come before your divine presence this afternoon, standing in this holy place, realizing you are God all by yourself, you are sovereign. We stand right now asking that you would use this thy servant, send forth the Rama word into our hearts. Meet us in this place for such a time as this to deliver the word to your people. We pray your word will be embedded within good soil. Let it find good ground, God. We pray in the name of Jesus that your word would work in every heart that it finds. In this message, let it bring conversion. Let it bring restoration. Let it bring healing, God. Meet us right now, God, as we come together to hear your word. Use your servant. We pray that someone, God, will go down in water baptism today in the name of Jesus. Someone, God, be filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Lord, someone, God, that's been discouraged and turn around and return back to you. Well, Lord, this is the day that you've made. They shall rejoice. They shall be glad in it. Do a new thing in their life, God. We pray right now these blessings are upon your people. You'll give your name all glory, all honor, and all praise. And let's all say in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. From verse number 42, I'd like to lift my subject from, if you can look at your neighbor and talk to him this afternoon. Look at your neighbor in the eye. They won't hit you. They won't bite you. I believe you're your friend. Amen. Tell them, don't make a wish. Come on, you some of you don't have to say anything. Don't make a wish. Don't make a wish. Now look at them. You look at them and they look at you. Tell them, don't make a wish. Don't make a wish. Make it happen. Make it happen. Don't make a wish. Make it happen. For a subtopic, I choose Jesus. I wonder how many this Thanksgiving season have uh, 
really taking the time out to be thankful unto the Lord for what he has done. The psalmist said, I would have fainted. In other words, I would have thrown the towel, I would have given up, I would have fainted. Unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Whether you had a 30 pound turkey to sit down at the table, at the table and dine on, or whether you had a little piece of chicken, amen? It doesn't matter, we all have something to be grateful about. Maybe all you had was a hot dog and a plate of fries, but you got something to be thankful about, amen? amen. Seems like in this season, early and early, it always seems to be about getting more. Black Friday ends up to being Great Thursday. <laughs> I think even the stores, you know, they used to say when well, you come in at 4 o'clock in the morning, now they say they change it to midnight. Come in early and get what you want. People today have made wish lists for a lot of different things today, but I'm concerned as a servant of the Lord today how many people have a desire and a need to want to serve the Lord? Sometimes we look back at our lives and as we get older we think, you know, I wish I would have did this better. And I think perhaps all of us, if we could go back in life through hindsight and say, you know what, if I could do it all over again, how many know that you would do some things different in your life? Amen. There would have been some better choices you would have made in your life. And if you only knew, knew now, Back then, what you know now, imagine how far off and how better off you would be if you could take the knowledge and the mind that you have now. You wouldn't have made those mistakes as a teenager. You wouldn't have gotten in trouble in your 20s, amen? At the time we have a life of saying, I wish I would have done this better. I wish I would have finished school. I wish I would have hooked up with the right person. Some of us have got some mental scars in our lives because we listen to the rap somebody and we were deceived by what it looked like. Sometimes things aren't always as they appear. There's an old saying, everything that shines isn't gold. Amen? Amen. We live in a world where there's a lot of pretense where it seems to be uh, if it looks good then you need to go after it. If it sounds good then you need to go after it. The problem with that is that you can never please your flesh. Right. When you say the flesh, it's a spiritual term, but we're talking about our carnal nature. Yeah. With everything that Adam and Eve had in the garden, the Bible said, the Lord told them, you can have everything in the garden. All the trees and all the fruit is yours. But a tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that was one tree I want you to stay away from. For the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. Ever since that time, there's been uh, unrest in the human condition. Marketers, no sooner than you get a new car, they've got a new motto out. I, I, I've got a, I, I caught a good deal when I thought on a Camry out there. And didn't buy it, but at least it didn't. I said, well, for the money I've got set aside, I think I can do this and fit this within my budget. And driving home last night, I think I saw the 2012. Said, wow, that's nice. I like to have that. I'm thinking, how can I even think about that when I've got a 2011 out there right now? Amen? Some of us sat down at the table this holiday season, and uh, I'm guilty. I went to the Kirklands and I loaded my plate up. Sister Kirkland, and she started to laugh. She said, yeah, that's Pastor. That. She can call me Pastor, but you know, I'm Uncle Juan over there. She said, that's why I got the bigger plates. So you would have to go back for more helpings. And I piled it on. I took everything I could. And I told them I hadn't ate. I didn't eat breakfast. I didn't eat lunch. So I'm eating all three meals in one setting. And I put the potatoes on there, the sweet potatoes, the turkey, and they fixed it up. Amen? Amen. Then came to the best part of the meal was a dessert. All right. Philadelphia cream cheese. My wife makes that and Kirkland's made that. And 
So, so Debbie, she, I guess she found a new fruit topic. She decided to get strawberries and berries. It was like three fruits all mixed up in one. So I took some of that on my plate, and I took some of the blueberries on my plate, and she made cherry. I put some, some of that on the plate. And I had a nice size dessert plate. Amen? Amen. You know how it is with Thanksgiving. It's not Thanksgiving unless you carry something over to the next day, right? Right. Amen, somebody. Amen. We like watching the Food Network, and uh, we were watching the Food Network, and they say, here's, here's some ways how you can take Thanksgiving leftovers and make something of it. Some of the different chefs out there, some of the things you get, you know, and uh, I think was it Paula Dean had some, and you're, if you ever watch her, she likes putting everything in grease, you know, but she took all the leftovers and patted it up and threw it in the grease. <laughs> And I said, mmm, that's some good food with their accent. You know how it is. <laughs> what I'm saying today, in our flesh, it seems like we can never satisfy. Because no sooner than we satisfy the appetite, later on, the flesh always wants more. In this story here this afternoon, we find a relationship between two sisters. It was a family that Jesus was very close to, and we find that as Jesus was passing by, the Bible says there, as he went into a certain village, a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. Notice here, Martha opens the door and receives Jesus. And Martha's got some characteristics about her. Jesus perceives and looks at her and says, Martha, you're very worried, very nervous. In other words, Martha is cleaning and working in the house here. And, and because of the closeness that she has, not only with her sister, Mary, but she has a closeness with the Lord, because here's an instance where we find here that Martha is telling Jesus to get on her sister because she's not helping out. I don't know about you, but uh, sometimes... Uh, we can feel somewhat like that when it comes to life. Because in a relationship here, we find that with these two sisters, there was a strain in the relationship. Yes, Martha's covered about and worried about many things, so she's obviously feeling very moody and very irritable, very grouchy. I'm glad nobody here feels like that. I'm glad everybody's mellow over here today. Look at your neighbor. Do they, do they look mellow right now? Sometimes we feel just like Martha. We sit on pins and needles. Amen? Sometimes we feel like if they say one more word to me, I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. Not, not anybody in here because we're all saved, right? Yeah. Look at that. This is the human condition. The human condition deals with the feelings of our flesh. Sometimes in life, we feel like nothing's going right. Sometimes we feel like I'd be better off in life if I just would have got a little bit of help. Sometimes we're, we don't see the big picture, but we can only see what's right in front of us. And this was the characteristic of Martha here. We find here as she is serving, as I was asking the Lord to give me a word, I was, I was wondering, here she answers the door. Jesus is at the door. <coughs> she invites him in. <coughs> but yet she doesn't pay attention to him. Now we're not talking about another relative. We're talking about the master yes, Lord. coming into their house. I'm not talking about a distant uncle. We're talking about the master coming into their house. Yes, Lord. And if our minds could go back there, uh, I imagine we could see her wiping off the tables and doing things. So she feels here that, you know what? I've got to get my house in order, but you know what? It's too late because Jesus is already in the house. Guess what? When the guest shows up, it's too late to start vacuuming. When the guest shows up, it's too late to start dusting. Amen? 
Right. When the guest shows up, they've got to see your house just the way it is. Yeah. Sometimes there are broken areas in our life that we are ashamed to present before the Lord, but don't you know that you can't hide anything in the sight Amen. of the Lord? God knows all about your broken state. He knows all about your heart. He knows all about your pain. Yeah, yeah. Notice here, when Martha answers the door, she didn't say, well, hold on, the Lord. hold on, Jesus. I, I've got to do some straightening up. She invites him in. So she allows the Lord to come in, but nevertheless, she's, she's feeling the anxiety and stress today. Some people today, this is the most stressful time of the season because... You know what, if they didn't get what they wanted on Black Friday and on whatever Saturday, some people today have already made a wish list out that I want this for Christmas. <laughs> and if I don't get it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cop an attitude. Amen? Amen? And they missed the whole meaning of what the season is already about. Amen. I want to let you know today as we look at the lesson here, we look and Mary is picked on, but we find here what Jesus knows, Jesus says here, it says, Martha, first of all, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. And I want to talk to those today, if you're honest with yourself, not everything in your life is in order the way you want it to be. Right. I want to talk to those today that beyond the nice suits and the clothes, that you realize today there's some things that's undone in your life. I want to talk to individuals today that want to be real with God and realize, Lord, there's some areas in my life that I need you to fix. Sometimes we don't come to God until we get broken, until we have some issues. Because we're living in a generation now, much like the age of Laodicea, where they feel that I'm increased with goods and have need of nothing. Jesus said in the third chapter of the book of Revelation, don't you know that you're blind? That you're miserable, that you're poor, and that you're naked. You ever felt that you haven't been able to see God the way you desire to see Him? Somebody's always in your vision. Trouble that's in your way, the song says, Trouble my way, gotta cry sometime. Amen? Amen. And I want to ask the question today. Since you can't do anything about your situation, isn't it about time for you to change and to make some things happen in your life? Amen. It's a time to throw out the wish list and say, you know what, instead of wishing for something, it's time for me to do something about my life. It's time for me to stop crying and to pick myself up and to turn around. The Lord tells Martha here, says, look at Martha hath chosen the best part. Because, uh, Mary, rather, because Mary has decided to sit down at the feet of Jesus and to listen to him. Yeah, yeah. I want to encourage you today as a servant of the Lord here to let you know that you must, it is imperative, that you take advantage of the time that God has given you right now to listen to what the Lord says. And this means, and this is hard for us to do as Pentecostals because we're used to praising and shouting over everything. Right. Right. It means taking the time out to listen after you're shouting, after you praise God. I have nothing against shouting and praising God. But after you get done shouting, after you get done praising God, when you get to in your quiet moment, right. the Lord says here, I want to commune with you. Yes. Amen. Uh, in other words, the Lord says, I want a one-on-one -on -one between you and me and nobody else in your life. That's right. So Mary here, somehow as we look at the life of Mary here, Mary has a way of being able to value the thing that means the most to her, and that is the master being the house. Some of you that were making clippings with... Black Friday, you were saying, okay, I've only got so much money, and because my money is valuable to me, I want to stretch my dollar as far as it can go to get the most for my dollar. Amen? Amen. And I don't blame you for that. That's part of being a wise servant. Amen? Amen? God doesn't want you to waste your money on things that you can't afford. 
But today I want you to turn it around because it's not so much in what you value as far as materialistic things, but the Lord says here, I want you to value on the things that be of heaven. God says, I want you to value the things that be of the kingdom. Yes. So it's a time today as we look at Mary, I believe we could pull some things for, from her because apparently down on the inside, Mary has a thirst for God. I want to take my time and talk to you a little bit. Different things come to quench our thirst for God. It's the devil's objective today to get you sidetracked from what God has told for you to do and for you, have, then for you to have your mind stay on a person, a place, or a thing. John went on to say, all that is in the world is the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Mary has the mind here of a God-first mentality. Mary has a mindset here of that which be of the kingdom. And I want you to understand here today, the big picture here, is that before you even were born, God had a great plan for your life that you might be brought into relationship with Him. So beyond all the plans and all the things that you have done, that's fine. But make sure that you put the Lord in front of you in everything that you do. Amen. We find here sometimes when we choose the Lord, we find that even family members get upset with us. Yeah. Notice the closeness that uh, Martha has here, not only with her sister, uh, uh, Martha has with her sister Mary, but we find the closeness that she has in being able to communicate to the Master Jesus Martha gets on Jesus and tells Jesus, tell my sister to help me out. Now wait a minute. Who's the master here? Jesus is the master. Amen. Who's the head of your life? Who are you to tell God what to do? Amen. Sometimes we like to control people and situations and things and we're not happy unless we're able, able to control certain people. But what we must understand that when it comes to God, there is no controlling God. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. 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 Sometimes we can be, uh, we can get out of sorts with God. See, Martha here is really getting an attitude, getting a bad attitude. Amen. Not only... Uh, with her sister Mary, but she's getting a little irritable at Jesus, saying, Jesus, don't you see that I'm working here? Tell my sister Martha to help me out, Mary to help me out. Yeah. But we find here, God is not going to be pushed around by anyone. How do you know that maybe perhaps you need to change your prayer to where you pray? Because maybe God is telling you, you need to stop praying against somebody and start praying for somebody. Come on, let's give God some praise in here. <laughs> See, Martha spoke out, and she was speaking out, much like we pray, telling the Lord, Lord, I want you to do this because I'm doing it all by myself. But we find here that Jesus uh, puts things in a proper perspective because we see in verse 41, she, he says, Martha, Martha, thou art careful. In other words, you're troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary had chosen that good part. Yeah. Jesus does not, amen, put Mary in her place, but uh, he allows her to sit at his feet and to worship him. Right. Some people today are so busy doing everything and anything but serving God. And they want to get upset because you have a mind to want to be in the house of God. Some people today are so busy. We live in a busy world today. But people today are busy doing the wrong things. The Bible, Jesus said, what does a man profit if he gain the whole world and lose his soul? So there are some things today as we look at these two characters here uh, as far as value and worth. That the way God looks at it, God says here, for you to be able to be willing to sit at my feet and to understand who I am, you have chosen the best part. Amen? So I just want to encourage you today in your very hectic life to make sure that whatever you do, don't make a goal, don't make a plan, don't make a decision without putting Jesus in front of you. 
Amen. If you put the Lord in front of you, you'll find out that God will bless you on your job. Amen? Amen. If you put the Lord in front of you. If you put the Lord in front of you in your marriage, you'll find out that when there comes times when the devil wants to tear you apart, you'll find yourself, there's, a, there's his way and then there's her way, but then there's God's way. Amen. What does God say about the situation? When you choose Jesus, you choose to understand that it is not within your own self to do the things that you want to do, but you have chosen today to hear the voice of the Lord, and sometimes God has a way of speaking to you all by yourself. Mary chooses to sit at the feet of Jesus, and Jesus says she has chosen that good part. And I like the latter part of verse number uh, 42. Look at that. Jesus says here, she's not only chosen that good part, but it shall not be taken away from her. Thank you, Jesus. Understand, it's the devil that comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. For the Lord said, I came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. So we've come this morning and this afternoon, rather, not to make a wish list, but we come to say, Lord, there's some things that's broken in my life that I need you to help me to make it happen. If you want a better education, then you need to put the Lord in front of you and say, Lord, I need you to help me as I go back to school because I got some professors that just don't care about me. But Lord, help me to make it happen. Lord, I've got some people that's not saved my family and they need to know who you are. But God, I need you to anoint my life that when they see me stand up for the gospel and when they see me stand up for Jesus and they see me stand up for the word of God, Lord, let my life be so anointed that it will penetrate their heart that they'll fall down in their face and they ask, what shall I do to be saved? Yeah. Make it happen. Right. Nothing just happens by happen chance. Amen. The world wastes their time throwing money away saying, I wish I would hit the lottery. I wish this would happen. They got the priorities all wrong. We need to be able to ask ourselves, in other words, it's not what we want but what you need to ask yourself, and I need to ask myself, everybody needs to understand, what does God want out of our lives? Yes. After all, isn't he the one that created us? Yes. Isn't he the one that formed us, amen, in our mother's womb before we even had a consciousness of knowing who he was? Isn't Jesus the one that gave the desire down on the inside for us to even want to know who he is? Jesus said here, understand that you didn't choose me, but I have chosen you. See, we've got this thing all wrong. Amen. To those who you serve and those who you yield to, those are the servants that you become. But we must understand here today that God has created us not to serve ourselves, uh, not to grandize ourselves, not to give ourselves a name, but God has created us today to be able to lift up the name of Jesus. This is what it's all about. If you never become a millionaire, it's because God never wanted you to become a millionaire. But God wants you to be faithful with the things that be of the kingdom of God. See, the Lord knows there's some things, amen, that he would not allow us to have because we know that once those things happen, we will take our minds off of God and we will go after the blessing instead of the blesser, amen? So the Lord keeps back some things in our life because he knows that we would get the big head, amen? But I want to encourage you today, amen, if you're going to make a, a list today, don't make a wish list on the things of the world, but make, amen, a list of saying today, I want to do the things that be of God that I might hear the Lord say, well done. Yes. It's not, amen, a very popular thing, but we find here Mary chose the best part because Mary knew that it's all about having a real relationship with Jesus. Yes. Having a real relationship with Jesus will allow you to be prepared for when tests and trials come your way. Right. Now, I come here to let you know today that yes, you're going to have trials. Yes, you're going to have tribulation. There are going to come times when then he's going to come in and try to erode your faith, but you got to know who you really are. Right. you got to know your identity. Yes. you got to know today the plan that God has for Hallelujah. you. you got to look beyond, amen, the things of what your eyes may see and what you may feel down within your flesh, and you got to know that God today gives power to the believer that are willing to sit at the feet of Jesus. Yes. So let's not, amen, make fun 
at those who want to come to the house of God. Uh, let's not throw stones at those that are trying to be spiritual. Amen. But rather, let's turn ourselves around and let's work together to be what God would have us to be. We're living in a world where there are too many haters today. Uh, and I'm afraid it was like it was in the times of Jesus' day. Uh, Jesus said, don't, don't you understand, uh, amen, uh, that the servant is no greater than the master. Understand that as a believer, they hated Jesus and they're going to hate you. Uh, but it doesn't matter how much they hate you. Uh, you've got to have a mind made up that I'm going to sit at the feet of Jesus. Uh, because when I sit at his feet, God is going to give me something, uh, amen, that allows me to have some spiritual fortitude down on the inside. Uh, so when the wind comes my way and the devil tries to give me a mental breakdown, uh, the Bible said I'm able to keep that which is committed to me against that day. Uh, amen. Choose today what is the best part. God is saying today, I already went first. Now it's your turn. I'm reminded of the old TV show Beretta. Amen. Some of you probably aren't old enough to remember that. But Beretta had a saying. He said, now, boy, the ball's in your court. What are you going to do with it? And I come to let you know today, as a believer, God has given you the word. And God is saying, what are you going to do with the word? God has given you, amen, free access to be able to come into his house and to be able to worship him freely at his feet. Uh, but what are you going to do with the body that God gave you? Uh, the ball now is in your court. Uh, God has thrown you the pass and God wants you to make a touchdown for him. Uh, amen. Mary chose the best part when she sat at the feet of Jesus. Uh, and God is saying, I need you to make wise choices today. Uh, when you make the wise choice, you realize uh, amen, that your body is a temple of the living God. Uh, in other words, you can't do with your body whatever you want to do. Uh, but you got to realize that this body was made to glorify God. Uh, therefore, amen, you must not lie with your body. Uh, you must not lie with your tongue. Uh, amen, you must not take anything in your body that will destroy your body. Uh, amen, when you choose the best part, uh, you choose no longer to drink alcohol and wine. Uh, but you choose to drink at the streams of living water. Uh, See, when you choose the right part, uh, then you have the right results. Uh, some people today, they make wrong choices all their life. Uh, and then they scratch their head and they moan and they cry. Why? Woe is me. Uh, well, you made that decision to rob the bank. Uh, you made that decision to tell the lie. Uh, you had the opportunity to do the right thing. Uh, but you chose, amen, to yield to the devil. Uh, but aren't you glad today that God gave you good common sense uh, to be here in the house of God. Uh, so children of God, stand tall today. Uh, stand tall as a believer. Uh, don't worry about the haters, amen. Uh, don't worry about those in your own household, uh, amen, that want to get on you. Uh, they're just trying to take you away from the feet of Jesus. Uh, but I'm determined today, amen, uh, that there's one thing that I have desired of the Lord uh, and that will I seek after. Uh, God is saying today, I want some true believers that are willing to stand up for me. As a Christian today, you must be willing to take up your cross and to follow the Lord daily. The choice is yours today. Moses chose to suffer affliction with the people of God that enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. And may I be lying if I told you that everything's going to be rosy as a believer. Everything is going to be okay as a believer. No child of God, you're going to have some times, uh, amen, where you're living in times like a famine. Uh, you're going to go through some desert times. Uh, you're going to go through some times because you made it up in your mind to live for God. Uh, people are going to look at you like you're crazy. Uh, what do you mean you don't get high? Uh, what do you mean, amen, you don't want to lay with me? Uh, what do you mean you don't want to do this and that? Uh, but when you know you've been set apart for the Lord, uh, because you have chosen to hear the voice of the Lord, uh, amen, you can't listen to the world uh, and listen to God too. Uh, you got to have a made up mind of who you're going to serve. Uh, Joshua said, for as for me in my house, uh, I will serve the Lord. Uh, I wonder how many are in here this afternoon uh, came here out of form or fashion. Uh, or how many came out of here because they choose Jesus. Uh, if you choose Jesus, you will go through. Uh, if you choose Jesus, you're not worried about the fire. Uh, if you choose Jesus, you're not
not worried about the haters. Uh, if you choose Jesus, you know you'll know today. Uh, amen. That God will fight your battles. Uh, many people today, they want to fight your own battles. Uh, they want to control situations. Uh, when you are a believer today, uh, and you're willing to put the Lord in front of you, uh, amen, you know, amen, that the battle does not belong to you. Uh, what battle am I talking about? Uh, I'm talking about the battle of doubt. Uh, I'm talking about the battle of low self-esteem. Uh, some of you today feel like, well, I'm nobody, uh, because somebody said you'll be a nobody. Uh, but I want to ask you the question, did God say you're a nobody? Uh, did God say you cannot overcome? Uh, did God say he will not bless you? Uh, amen. You won't find the word can't in God's vocabulary, uh, because everything with God is can do. Uh, Nike has an expression, just do it. Uh, what I'm telling you today is a believer. Uh, amen. Just do it today. Uh, make it happen in your life. Uh, if you want more joy from God, uh, then the Bible says you like yourself in the Lord, uh, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Uh, it's up to you to make it happen. Uh, encourage that neighbor next to you. Say, neighbor, uh, it's up to you to make it happen. Uh, amen. Shake that neighbor. Look at him. Uh, say, neighbor, it's time for you to make it happen. We're living in a world with too many excuses today. I'm tired of people singing a sad song. I'm tired of people crying the blues. Amen. After you get done singing the blues, amen, that woman's not coming back to you. After you get done singing the blues, all that money you wasted on, on booze is not coming back. But it's time for you to make your life count now. It's time to make your life be worth something. Your life is only worth something when you are committed uh, to serving the Lord. Uh, so right now, say, I choose Jesus. Uh, I choose to make it happen. Uh, too many times we sit back and we wait uh, for somebody else to go first. Uh, no, you go first. No, you go first. Uh, but you know when you were out there in the world, uh, amen, nobody had to tell you, uh, amen, to go first. Uh, you were the first one at the bar. Uh, you were the first one at the drug house. Uh, you were the first one at the party. But now when it comes to serving God, we all want to back up. As if God, amen, is upset with us. Don't you know today God has broken down the middle wall of tradition. In other words, God is no longer angry with you. Because God already made a way of escape for you. But you got to understand today that God wants to pull you out of your trouble. God wants to deliver you out of your worries. So you can't serve God and be worried. You got to choose who you're going to serve today. Many people already have a mindset that I'm already broken. In other words, I'm stuck. I'll be stuck on these pills for the rest of my life. Amen. Since I'm depressed, I'm just stuck with these pills. But I want to encourage you today. Amen. To try Jesus. Jesus to get you off of those pills. You don't need pills for depression. All you need is the word. you to have a boyfriend. Maybe God didn't want you to have a girlfriend. Hey Amen. If you had a boy or a girl in your life, if you wouldn't love Jesus, you'd be busy following after them. Calling them up on the phone. But because God has not allowed that to happen, God is taking the props out of your life. God is saying, I want you to lean and depend upon me. Hey Amen. When everything else is going south, God said in his word, the psalmist said, I will look to the hills. For when coming my help, all of my help cometh from the Lord. So understand today that all things work together for good. So understand with me all things. All things. All things work together for good. To those that are called on God. To those that are the chosen today. God has chosen you today as a believer to be able to stand in your chest. God has chosen you today as a believer. Amen. To be able to weather the storm 
growth in your life. Uh, amen. God has chosen you today. Uh, amen. To know who he is. Uh, and that's why he's put a desire down on the inside. Uh, to want to come to the house of God. Uh, don't count it a life thing today. Uh, not everybody wants to know who Jesus is. Uh, like you do. Uh, not everybody wants to praise God. Uh, like you do. Uh, people in this generation, they're stuck today. Uh, they're stuck in a lazy mode. Uh, they don't want to serve God, but they'll serve themselves. Uh, they don't want to work for God, but they'll work for themselves. Uh, amen. They're busy doing things that don't amount to the kingdom of God. Uh, but God said you're better than that. Uh, because some of you in here are like Mary. Uh, you're willing to sit at the feet of Jesus uh, and get everything that you need from him. Uh, so sit at his feet today. Uh, be a worshiper today. Uh, amen. Get out of the state of laziness. Uh, get out of the state of quietness. Uh, oh, why sit down here and die? Uh, oh, my soul, why are God disquieted within me? Uh, God has already blessed you with so many things. Uh, the choir is singing today. Uh, there's just so many wonderful things about him. Uh, some of us got food at home, uh, but yet we're not satisfied. Uh, we got more clothes in our closet that we can get into. Uh, but yet we're not satisfied. Uh, the reason why you're not satisfied uh, is because you have not chosen that best part. Uh, you haven't chosen Jesus. Uh, you've chosen the imitation today. Uh, you've chosen everything but Jesus. Uh, but there's still time for you to get it right with God. Uh, there's still time for you to turn it around. Uh, there's still time for you to reprioritize your life. Uh, so you got to make it up in your mind. Uh, I'm going to sit at the feet of Jesus. Uh, and it doesn't matter who doesn't like it. Uh, if i got to stay here all night long, uh, then I'll stay here all night long. Uh, if they get upset with me because I go to church, uh, then shame on them. Uh, if they get upset with me because I pay my tithes, uh, then shame on them. Uh, I'm going to stay at the feet of Jesus. Because uh, one day he's coming back again uh, for people that have made themselves ready. Uh, and God's going to say, what have you done uh, with the life I've given you? Uh, what have you done uh, with the money that I gave you? Uh, what have you done with your children? Uh, what have you done with your grandchildren? Uh, what have you done with the word I've given you? Uh, have you been a good steward of it? Uh, did you train them up in the way that they should go? Uh, or did you do your own? Thing. Uh, were you glad? Were you glad in your heart uh, when they said it's church time? Uh, was there running in your feet? Uh, was there clapping in your hands? Uh, oh God, take us out of this state of weariness. Uh, take us out of this state of depression. Uh, I choose to serve Jesus today. Uh, I know that if I serve Him, He'll make my enemies my footstool. Let's give God some praise here. Let's stand over this building. Let's stand over this building. Choir, let's give us a song. Give us a song to give us a song this afternoon. Chasing after you. Chasing after you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, put a pep in your step. It's time for you to make it happen. Don't make a wish, make it happen. How can you make it happen? You, you can make it happen by stepping out on faith. Amen? Amen. This means you step out into areas that you may be uncomfortable with. You might say, well, if I serve God, then I'm going to be without this, I'm going to be without that. Don't worry about what you're without. But I know today that because you've chosen to sit at the feet of Jesus, you've chosen the best 